Hoya! Welcome once again to another video, my stellar subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber or you're new here, well, hello there. <laughs> so it's definitely been a while, so I thought it was about time I made another tutorial video. So the topic of this video is all about drawing wings, wing construction, and wing types for character designs. Here's the list of what we'll be going over today. Alrighty, now the first thing that's good to know about drawing, well, anything really, is knowing what something looks like in real life. You know that rule about studying and practicing realism before simplifying it? I'm basically gonna do that here, by showing you a more realistic version of a wing before showing you a simpler way of drawing it so your wings can look anatomically correct yet simplify to fit in whatever style you draw in. So what you want to do when even thinking about drawing a wing is that you want to think of it as an arm. Because you'll see here in a minute, the general structure of a wing and an arm are actually pretty similar. The wing on the top is based off of a bird or feathered wing. Looking down to the bone, you can compare a bird wing and a human arm as they both have similar bone types at about the same places. For example, right past the shoulder, you have the humerus, which is that long bone between the shoulder and the elbow. Then you have the elbow. After the elbow is that part of your arm where you have those two bones known as the ulna and the radius. This part of your arm is what allows you to twist your hand from palm to the back of the hand without twisting your entire arm. Then you have those teeny little hand bones. These little bones are what allow you to squeeze, bend, and clench your hands. Here's where I color parts of the wing that correlate with parts of the arm. Of course though, the wing has a few more colors than the arm does as there are other parts that make a wing different from an arm, besides the wings. For example, the bones of a bird are usually hollow or spongy inside so they can fly easier without gravity pulling down on them as much. Human arms on the other hand, and bones in general, are thicker and harder structurally. Like for example, think of all the things that you usually use your arms for. Climbing, lifting, swinging. Birds don't climb or lift weights, like they're not meant for that. But imagine a bodybuilding bird. That would be a buff bird. A beefy bird. Birds do, however, have an almost hand-like bone structure at the end of their wing. So even though they don't have fingers, they do have a bone that is kind of like a thumb that is at the end of the wing so the wing can bend in when they're perching. You know, so they can sit with their wings comfortably snugged up next to them until they're ready to take flight again. This thumb-like area on the wing is marked blue and correlates to the part of the human arm, where humans have thumbs. There's also another wing type that I wanted to show in this video, which is a bat or dragon wing. And just like with the bird wing and arm, bat wings also have a similar bone structure. Bat wings are actually more similar to the human arm than bird wings, which makes sense as bat and humans are both mammals. Bat wings also have the humerus, ulna, radius, and right up to their tiny little hand bones. But one thing that makes it quite unique is that they have very long, skinny finger bones. Like, literally, do the, like you would do a similar process for drawing hands, but just with a very small palm, and very long, lengthy fingers, with small joints where they would bend. So if you look at it, a bat wing pretty much just looks like a big outstretched hand. Oh, another thing are those wide stretches of skin between the finger bones. One thing I'd like to mention is that when I see a lot of dragon type wings in some artwork on either dragons or people, is that sometimes they look like webbed feet or fish people ears or something. So if this is how you happen to draw wings and you'd like to change it, here's some tips for that. Okay, so the thing that usually makes it look like a froggy foot is that it doesn't have the basic structure. Remember, think of a wing like an arm. You have the humerus, elbow, hand, all of that. The actual wing part is just basically the hand. This is in a new appendage. Nothing can bend, there are no joints, it can't properly function. This is a good example of how knowing the proper structure of the real thing helps to simplify it when drawing it in your own style. Now I know, I know, every time you want to draw a wing or any other body part, you don't want to have to go through bones and muscles and tendons and all that kind of structures. But of course, that's why here, as you guys know, first I explain and then simplify. So now that I've explained, I'll simplify it. But first, I wanted to show you guys some things you may want to avoid. So, let's say you've just made a new OC. Let's call him, uh, Reginald. Yeah, sure. Reginald. So, Reggie over here looks a little plain, so you want to add some wings. But you may not know how to draw wings, so you just kind of add these bulbous, squiggly back and forth shapes on Reggie's back. But of course I'm not saying not knowing how to draw something is bad, but drawing something from memory makes it a little harder. And sometimes it could get frustrating when you're not happy with the way it looks, but you're sure you know what a wing looks like because you see birds like all the time, they're like everywhere, but just drawing a wing gets a little tricky. Mostly if you don't draw wings on a regular basis, which unless you're drawing wings every day, you may not have a technique or anything on how to draw them. But this is where references are useful. But anyways, some of the main reasons you want to avoid these examples on little Reggie's back is that if you look at it compared to the wings I just showed you before, these aren't really based on proper structure and likely can't function properly. Oh, and size, size. Wing size is something that seems overlooked and pretty underrated in character designs. I see this very often, actually. For example, on the fourth Reginald, which you'll, you'll, see, which you'll see in a minute, 
His wings are very small. It wouldn't really make sense that his wings could carry him much of anywhere. Now I know, I know, before you go type it away or tell me anything, I know there are some animals whose wings are proportionally small compared to their bodies. But if you notice, those animals are small and light. For example, a bee or a hummingbird. They have small wings, but their wings, for one, beat very fast. They are small animals, thus gravity does not pull down on them as much. If you notice, larger animals with wings, their wings flap slowly so they can pick up a lot of air to thrust them upwards. Another thing is that these animals need to consume a lot to be able to sustain the amount of fast movement that their wings need to go through. Larger animals with their longer and larger wings usually fly for a farther distance, while smaller animals with their very fast flapping wings, they fly for usually short distances from their home, you know, flower to flower, as hummingbirds and bees do. You can also think of it how planes fly. Planes are good for long distances in one direction to the other, while these smaller animals with their smaller wings are good for hovering and turning around easily. Alrighty, so next, here are some types of feathered wings. Firstly, if we just think about character design, one of the most enjoyable parts of it is dressing up and adding accessories to your character, at least in my opinion. Now, I mean, you could just make a character and then throw on... I don't know, a big hoodie, three belts, a fedora, slippers, six tails because your OC is part beaver, some okay gloves, knee pads, and a random face bandage. So sure, you could say that's unique and creative, but it adds more to a character when you put some thought in their design. This is why character descriptions or bios are helpful, especially if you want to make some kind of series or comic. You want a small backstory and personality and then give them elements based around that. For example, let's say you have a character who's really into bright colors. They have a friendly personality, but they live in a cold, snowy climate. You'd likely give this character warm, fuzzy clothes for their climate, but because of their personality, very bright colored sweaters. Ooh, or if you have a character that's loosely based on a culture from another country, then you could do a quick Google to see the significance of a specific article of clothing in its history. Doing little things like that can really make your character just seem more real. A lot of writers and concept artists also get their inspiration from different time periods around the world. Like a lot of RPG games are based on the era of medieval ages with their knights and kings and princesses and dragons and stuff like that. Some artistic genres may be loosely based on a certain time period and then they use their own imaginations to create things that weren't around then, like steampunk or cyberpunk. Both of these mix technology from two different time periods. Steampunk is inspired by the 19th century industrial era and invents technology that didn't really exist back then, but makes it work and look as if it did exist back then. Like, I don't know, a steam-powered hoverboard with a bunch of gears and with a rusty copper sort of look to it. Cyberpunk refers to the era that could either be a present or future city, whose society is oppressed and dominated by an artificial intelligence. Ooh, just thinking about it is making me excited to make characters. But just think about it, doing a little research on cultures, time periods, technology, or even mythology can add a lot to character design. It takes a character from simple or even confusing to well thought out and intriguing. So if you're wondering how I'm going to tie all this together back to a section about wings, is this is when it's good to have some information and a good idea of the kind of character you have. For example, if you want to give your character wings, it's helpful to have that bio of what your character is like. If you have more of an edgy character, you may lean more towards having dragon or bat wings. If you have a mythical, fluttery character, you may lean more towards fairy or butterfly wings. Feathered wings could make someone think of an angel or a bird, so feathered wings could give a feeling of freedom, peace, or adventure. This section of the video is showing you guys five different types of feathered wings and what they're for. Uh, flying. But more specifically, the type of flying they're good at. I'm showing you how to draw each type and leaving the shapes in each drawing so you can try it too. Most of these wings have two shapes. The first shape would have the area from the shoulder to the wrist. This means yes, there would be the bird equivalent of an elbow in that shape, so it can bend. But note, these are all outstretched versions of each wing. So if you were to have a bended version of one of these wings, the first shape would turn into two shapes. The second shape represents where the bird's equivalent of the wrist and hand would be. This is the part that bends downward. This is helpful for the bird to bend their wings in when they've landed so the wings can be nice and compact next to their bodies. So I used a lot of references including real pictures of wings to draw these examples, and this may be more detailed than the style you usually draw in. If that's the case, just remember simplifying. Use the shapes I showed you here, but just draw a few less feathers and show some implied shapes. Use larger humps and curves to look like the wings are here or any other reference you use, but just with less detail. And remember, shading helps too. Alrighty, after quite a bit of research, I found a very helpful article at birds.cornell.edu that gave a very good explanation of bird wing types and their uses. After some sketching and labeling, here are some simplified visuals and descriptions for each main type. Okay, so the five main wing types I found were active and passive soaring, elliptical, hovering, and high-speed wings. All of these wings are sized and shaped differently to the body of each bird that it belongs to. Okay, so the first type of wing is active soaring wings. 
These wings are very large and somewhat thin. Because of their shape and size proportion to the wing's body, the wings are best for soaring. These birds fly for quite a long time without flapping. Birds with these wing types are quite dependent on wing currents that they can ride on. Because of this, they often fly really high up in the air so they can catch the best ones. Some birds with these types of wings include eagles, most hawks, and storks. The second type of wing is passive soaring wings. Passive wings seem to be one of the most popular types of feathered wings to draw. Passive soaring wings are also long, but the ends of them are very spread out. This is to make slots between their feathers so they can catch lots of warm, vertical columns of air. And because heat rises, this helps lift the bird higher. This wing type is also very broad, with many long feathers, all from the tip down to the body. Birds with this wing type also include eagles, like the bald eagle specifically, hawks, and storks. The next type of wing is the elliptical wing. These wings are quite round compared to the previous ones. They're also good for short bursts of speed. I think owls are examples of birds that have wings similar to these, since their hunting style often involves them perching quietly in trees, and because they go for mice and other small animals, they need to have some quick bursts of speed to catch them. Just as a random note though, owls actually have pretty special, almost fluffy feathered wings that allow them to fly very quietly without disturbing the wind around them. This helps them catch up to their prey as they wouldn't hear them when they're flying through the air. Anyways, elliptical wings help birds take off quickly while also moving and turning very well. Birds with wings like this include small forest birds such as robins and sparrows. Bats are also animals that are considered to have this wing type, but of course are not feathered. The next type of wing is hovering wings. These types of wings are quite different from the past few wing types because they're very small and require a lot of flapping. The wing shape is also interesting because if you compare it to a wing like that of an insect, for example a dragonfly or a bee, it's actually pretty similar. They're small and flap really quickly. Hummingbirds are the most popular type of birds with this wing type. The last wing type I have here is high speed wings. These wings are proportionately long and thin compared to the bird's body, but are still smaller than the soaring and hovering wings. These wings help birds fly very fast while maintaining said speed. Birds with these types of wings include swallows, falcons, and ducks. Alrighty, so here are all five wing types. I'll be sure to post these on a few of my social media accounts so you can look out for those as a reference. This next section is to go over several different types of wings and the shapes and joint placements to draw them. The first one is just a slightly bent in wing. Some of the easiest ways to draw feathered wings is by using ovals and rectangles. This wing uses ovals, two for the first part of the wing and one where the longer feathers start growing off the side. Ovals help you think about the wing shapes a bit easier because if you think about it, if you've ever seen a baby bird or a little chicken wing without any feathers, it looks pretty round and nubby, kind of like these three ovals. The next one is a simplified butterfly or which is also composed of ovals. Okay, so here's a way to draw a bat or dragon wing. If you think about early in the video, these wings are constructed like very long skinny hands. So for those fingers, or area where the actual wing is, use circles to know where to place things. And just like with fingers, you're gonna have about four trails of circles for each finger-like structure. The equivalent of the thumb is about at the top where it bends, and it curves down to the finger type shapes. Another thing I see a lot when people draw wings is that they put the finger structures along the area between the first and second circles. That would technically represent the arm, which would mean, just as it sounds, you're pretty much drawing fingers along the arm. So to avoid this, remember, those long finger structures stem from the second circle only. Oh, and another tip when drawing these types of wings is to think about an umbrella. Those skin flaps between each finger structure is similar to how an umbrella works. If you look at an umbrella, it has thin structures and then thin plastic or waterproof fabric material in between. They act very similar to a dragon or bat wing when they're fully stretched out and when they're bent and folded in. This next wing is a dragonfly wing. Most insect wings are pretty simple shapes, also consisting of either ovals or circles that have lots of tiny little lines and patterns on them. This next one is inspired by a techy futuristic type wing. These have simple shapes that look sleek and high tech. This type of wing has a structure of the tip of the wing more so than the base of the wing that connects to the back or side of a character. Because this is a made up wing, you can switch out a few shapes such as sharper shapes like triangles and pointed rectangles for a more serious look, or circles and rounded shapes for a softer look. It depends on your character. This wing is another bat slash dragon wing, but with a few longer bones and some ripped skin in between the structure. This gives a more serious, creepy, or rugged look. 
This is usually drawn on serious looking dragons or characters. To draw this, you'll pretty much do the same thing you would for a regular bat or dragon wing, but you can elongate or sharpen the lines. This adds a more dramatic effect to the wing. This last one is a large, partially folded in, feathered wing. This wing pose is often seen when a character with these wings is standing and is about to take off soon. Okay, so this last section is about putting a few wing types on some characters' bodies. Here are just a few examples on how I have used wings on a few original characters. You can technically place wings anywhere in a character's body, but the most realistic place to put a set of wings would be on the torso. Because wings are similar to arms as far as structure, it makes sense to put them around the middle or upper torso. This will make lifting up the body weight easier on the character's limbs. Sometimes a character could have two sets of wings with a larger set higher up on the back and a smaller one on the lower back. Or a character could have three sets of wings. Sometimes a character has wings for arms. This is seen in the art of the Greek mythological creature known as a harpy. The types of wings you use on your character, like many things about your character design, is like I said before, based on a simple bio, think about the shapes, personality, colors, and backstory. Use those things to decide what wings to use or combine wing styles for whatever fits best with your character. All right, so the rest of these are just gonna be more examples. So if you'd like to draw with me or at least see the examples, then go ahead, you'll hear from me in a few minutes.
I'll be sure to post these on my social media accounts like Instagram or Pinterest, so be sure to look out for those. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. And here's Starlet with Wings just to show another example of how you can put wings on a character. So be sure to follow me on Pinterest, Twitter, or Instagram. Also seriously, Instagram is one of the somewhat easier places for me to post things, so I'm pretty active there. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and be sure to have a stellar day. Bye!